Lab Goat agents, thanks for joining us again. We've got a great crew with us today from back at you. And then Alex Rivlin out of Las Vegas. He is part of Lab Code Agents. He's one of our admins moderators. But let's welcome Michael Glazer, CEO of Back at You. I love your sweater, buddy. And <laughs> Katie Calloway. And your role is Director of Marketing? Marketing Manager. Marketing Manager. I think I just gave you an upgrade. There you go. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> a blazer right there. Hooray. It's a race. <laughs> All right. So today we're going to be talking about really managing your social media during the crisis that, that we're all in right now. And it's sensitive times for, for a lot of people in the way that we are really communicating. And so you just have to be using a lot more heart is what I'm telling people. A lot more heart, a lot less selling, and who better to show us than Back at You. Back at You is located close to me, and I've still never been to their office. It's my fault. It's not Michael's or Katie's. Uh, I'm out of a Thousand Oaks, and they're in Sherman Oaks, which is like 30 minutes away. Crazy. Alex, though, is super far from me. He's in Vegas. So far. Uh, <laughs> so far. So far. But Michael, you mentioned something before we got started in regards to what, where we're at right now as, as a world and obviously as a country. And I thought it was really, really well put. So can you just repeat that just so people can see your, your train of thought here? Sure, sure. Well, just a quick intro, guys. Thanks, uh, you know, Tristan and uh, Alex for uh, having uh, myself and Katie here. Um, uh, we were we were here really early on lab coats. Uh, I think we actually sponsored one of their one of the very early parties years and years ago. So uh, that's right. Uh, always been a, a big fan of uh, of yours and Nick's, and uh, um, you know we wish uh, wish all you all your great success. So thanks for uh, for having us here. And by the way, yes, you haven't been to our office, but you were at our Christmas party too a couple of years oh, ago. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that, and that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, probably even a better venue, I have to say. That was great. Um, all right, so kind of you know jumping into it. Um, well, first you know back at you, right? We are a social media company. We were founded ten years ago, and one of the earliest companies to to jump in the social media space dedicated to real estate. So we really understand the space. We have tens of thousands of clients, um, and we have hundreds of brokerages that also use our social media platform. And also kind of our all-in-one system, right? Social, front-end, and back-end. Um, so I think we have a lot of experience. And, uh, and uh, we talk to clients, hundreds of clients every day. Matter of fact, you know, Katie and I had some big focus groups uh, this morning and yesterday with our customer success groups, with our support groups, and talking about all the issues and what's working kind of and what's not working. Um, but I guess maybe one important kind of point that more, Tristan, for you is that um, what do you see this, the role in, um, uh, for a real estate agent today in, in this market, right? In this crisis, how, you know, I kind of view it as, uh, you know, because yeah, my dad's in real estate, my brother's in real estate, my friends are in real estate. So I'm getting it not only from the company's perspective, but my family. Uh, so I totally, totally get it. Um, from my side, I'm seeing, you know, my family, they're like, like the Yentas, right? Uh, you know, considering it is Passover, for those who understand that, that term, it's kind of like that town gossip person. <laughs> and, uh, um, and that's kind of how I view the real estate agent in this community, right? You're the center of that community, right? And, um, and there's a great opportunity to express yourself, tell people what's going on in terms of maybe the current crisis, maybe who's infected, who's not, what you can do. Um, about the lines at the supermarket, is toilet paper available in stock, out of stock? I and mean, there's so many great conversations to have that are really not just opportunistic, but I mean, really kind of, you know, people want to know. And this is really high quality conversations, right? This is, they were in a thick thing. So, um, but, but, you know, Tristan, what, what are you doing? How are you, you know, with, you know, you're in front of a lot of people. What, what are you doing that you, you feel is working and, and how are you connecting? Well, I think, and Alex, because Alex and I are both real estate agents and Alex can attest to this. I think the key, the key to this is the mindset in which we come into it. And that's, uh, Alex and I are real estate agents, and we, we've we taken our a role in this as, hey, this is our duty. It's our duty as real estate agents to give back to the community because we're, we're in a position in, in a normal market, uh, and now even more so, to connect everybody, right? We provide shelter for people. 
we say, hey guys, this, is, this, this might be a good one for you. This is a better choice. Now let me guide you through this whole process. So we as real estate agents are supposed to know what's going on in the community, right? And what a better time to be able to wear that hat as a professional and say, yes, you can rely on me for that. I mean, what do you think, Alex? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, uh, the, the whole idea behind home ownership and housing is what do they say? There's 13 jobs created for every home that's built or purchased. So when you look at that, we connect at every angle and every level, right? We know the schools that are around homes. We know contractors. We know what restaurants are around homes. So the idea of being front and center and understanding what the needs of people are and what's in their vicinity, what grocery stores are open at what time, what time they're open, special hours for the elderly, uh, what food services are delivering, uh, what restaurants are remaining open and making sure that they're maintaining all of these CDC standards in cleanliness, we should know. And those are things that, you know, people like Tristan, myself, and many of our other uh, colleagues have been doing without this happening, right? It just hasn't been so front and center and so apparent. But, uh, but as agents, we really should be doing a lot more than opening doors and selling houses. It should be a lot more along the lines of creating community and connecting people. That's right. And I, I'm going to take it over to Katie. Katie, I know you've got a presentation to share. So sure. we can get, get this kick started uh, because they have, Michael and Katie have some amazing things to share with you as well. And then we'll, we'll interject in between this way we can, uh, we can give you our, our portion and our thoughts as well. You got it. And everything that you guys are just saying is just music to a marketing person's ears because you never want to shoehorn your business into a conversation that it doesn't belong. But real estate professionals like you guys are in such a unique situation where you are community experts. And in a climate where community support is imperative, I think it's so important to think about the unique role that your brand plays into people's everyday lives. Uh, of course, the majority of real estate professionals just want to focus on being a good neighbor, just like exactly what you're saying, because reputations aren't going to disappear once everything is over. Arguably, your reputation right now is being made in this time of crisis. So just being there for your community when they need you the most, which is right now, and social media is playing such an important role in doing that. Yeah, that's and that's true. And these, uh, and so uh, it's going to the discussion topics and we'll kind of jump right into kind of the, the meat and the bones um, is that, you know, let's talk about, um, you know, again, the role of the agent, which I think we touched upon that a little bit, but that also really translates into the content. W what are we talking about? What can we say? And, um, and let's give you some really great examples of what we're seeing our clients, how they're using content uh, and um, really excited to, to share that with you because it's, it's super successful. Uh, let's talk about we have listings, we're going to get listings, and virtual tours are the only way to really show houses today. And by the way, that's not going away, and um, that's gonna be here to stay. Uh, so we'll show you um, some cool virtual tour um, ways to, you know, to, um, uh, to do it. And finally- I love it, let me ask you a question yeah. just to our, to our audience really quick. For those of you watching on Facebook and those of you on the webinar, just uh, give us, a uh, shout and say, hey, I'm doing virtual tours right now, or I'm doing virtual showings or virtual open houses, just so I, I know how many people are doing it. Just uh, give a thumbs up or a yes, just so that we get some people. Oh, good. We're getting a lot of hands raising and a lot of <laughs> yeses. Perfect. Nice. Thank you. All right. Continue, Michael. I'm sorry. Cool. Just wanted to get everybody involved. Yeah, no, it's great. And, and I'll be interested to know if you're using a Facebook premiere or using Facebook events right? Mm -hmm. Two very similar technologies. So as we talk, you know, there's, I'm just curious which one you're using. Uh, and let's talk about lead generation. And, and I think uh, Tristan has some, uh, some good uh, points of how he's generating leads. And uh, I think he's willing to share it with everybody. Uh, yeah, definitely. Cool is, is, is that we're going to share um, during this presentation, a link to Dropbox. Uh, and that's going to have uh, a Facebook live uh, primer for virtual uh, open houses. So it's a how to. Uh, it's also going to be some sample pieces of content that you can use today. It yeah, really related to kind of like the, the COVID-19 and uh, social distancing and what are you doing at home. So we're going to provide some free content everybody can use. And, uh, and uh, Tristan's also going to provide some scripts, right? You still willing to do that, Tristan? 
Maybe, maybe. I'm just, I, I'm just joking with you. All right, cool, cool. And Alex can jump in there too on, uh, on, on what's working too on, on the lead gen. I think at the end of the day, that's kind of what, what people are looking for uh, too. So, uh, all right, let's, let's go into the, the content because content is, uh, is, is really the key. And yeah. as uh, everybody is really aware, um, internet traffic is through the roof. It's up between like 20 to 30%, you know, 50% in some places. And, um, uh, you know, downloads, right? The, the ability to, uh, you know, for video conferencing is up like 200%. So this is where the action's at. And let's talk to you on kind of what's working and, uh, and what's not. Uh, so Katie, how about I kind of jump in about some of this, uh, the video content that we're seeing? Sure. So one of the most important things that I can share with every real estate professional is that you have to remind your community that you are still there for them and that you're willing to harness the power of technology, video marketing to get the job done. So show your clients a list of how you can help right now. That's a goldmine piece of content because for a lot of them that don't work with homes on a regular basis, that aren't as familiar with real estate, a virtual open house could be completely foreign concepts to them. So if you talk about virtual open houses, electronic signature software, video consultations, email offers, that way, not only are you telling your audience that you're able to work despite the current climate, but you're also showing them. You can give them a list, create a little graphic, and present a concept on how you're still helping buy and sell homes that they might not have thought of themselves, right? Very true. Very true. Just something I want to add there. Uh, we spoke to Facebook this morning, and they said their numbers are up 70%. Wow. Which is insane. The amount of people that are on social media right now, uh, it, it's, it's unprecedented. So it's a beautiful time to be able to do exactly what you see right here, right? The virtual appointments, offers by email, virtual property tours. Just be more virtual. Mm -hmm. so, we're also seeing a lot of our clients take what we're providing and, and wire in a way for it to fit, fit the current narrative. Um, Glazer, if you wanted to talk about our client, that's, that's, oh yeah, this is a client that our, our customer support team was talking to uh, the other day. And, um, you know, so we, as part of our services, we post content, uh, uh, for all of our clients, uh, right? So whether we're doing this for you or you're doing it yourselves, uh, they edited some of the content. So the video, right, is all ours that, w that we presented and, uh, and are posting, but they're changing it to, you know, virtual home seller consultations available seven days per week. 8 a.m. to 9 a.m., right? So that concept of, you know, contacting me and setting up a virtual, you know, consultation, very big today, working extremely well. So I uh, highly encourage you to kind of change some of the content you're doing for, for that. Um, some other examples of, um, again, this is content that we're posting and, and our clients are changing it up a little bit, are some of these landing pages to encourage conversations, right? So this one is about um, just a virtual showing get their clients to, you know, uh, reach out to them so they can maybe go over some, um, some buy side uh, purchases. Uh, so let's kind of go over through the MLS. What houses have I picked out for you? And let's kind of review uh, those houses kind of online, right? So really kind of setting up kind of those appointments uh, and um, uh, working extremely well. Uh, is that another one? Michael, yeah. is that just to interrupt you? So I fully understand here. Is that a post on Instagram, on Facebook? And did you create that graphic or is that something that can easily be done just on Facebook like that? So this is a Facebook example. Um, this is a graphic that we created. It's something that all of our landing pages at Back at You are fully customizable. We give our clients a lot of options of pre-made content to choose from, of course, um, but mm -hmm. if they would like to customize it themselves to reflect their market, their goals, if they work with specific properties, they can absolutely do so. But this is something we made just for the purposes of this. I love it. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and talk about kind of an Instagram TV and another example of one of our, another client of ours. Yes, one of our clients has been promoting their Instagram TV series. They've been doing just very short snippets to share some community information, relief resources, uh, things that are just helping their clients stay busy while stuck in self-isolation. Uh, and of course, just pairing those with more time-sensitive hashtags like stay at home or virtual open house if they were promoting that. So I think 
cross promoting across all different platforms, not just Facebook, not just Instagram, but using the power of the internet to create these really strong conversations is going to only, only benefit you in the long run. I think we're learning a lot of lessons here that are going to help better prepare us for the future, not just when we're in moments like this pandemic. Question here from the audience. On the link that we're seeing there, virtual showings available seven days a week, is that a live link? So can, if people click on it, will that take them somewhere or no? This would be a contact me form example. Um, with that said, we can host listings at single property websites, uh, but this would just be an example of a contact me landing page to capture information nice. and follow up. All right, so if somebody clicks on it, it will take them to a landing page to fill in their name, email address. So we can, in essence, also do this uh, with a lead ad too, right? Absolutely. We can auto-populate. I love that. Glazer, that's awesome, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, lead ads are cool. Uh, something that you're doing, Tristan, and uh, I think that's a really, really an awesome product for sure. Um, yeah. That was, so anything, you know, um, so this is just the content, right? So I think the content uh, and uh, Alex, uh, if you have anything, you know, what you're doing over there, I'd love to hear it. But in general, it's, it's really kind of pushing the virtual, it's pushing the one-on-one, -on -one, uh, totally really, you know, key and, and, and important here for setting up meetings uh, and, um, and even kind of, you know, showing a, um, a whole list of, hey, here are, you know, houses I think that you'd be interested in, right? Just an excuse to get people on the phone do a Zoom call, conference call with them. And, you know, instead of kind of being one-on-one -on -one presenting, you're just presenting, a, you know, just like this. So it's uh, working well. I highly encourage everybody to do that. I, I just took, yeah. I, so sorry, guys. I wanted to interrupt you because I got excited here. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Katie and Michael, I just took a picture of these uh, and I sent them over to my team. I'm like, if you're not on this, please be, be doing this because this is pretty cool. Uh, we just talked about the landing pages on the previous one. Now, is this the same thing? Is this a picture? Or if I click on it, is it going to take me to a landing page? So this example that you're seeing on your screen is what we would, would suggest doing before you host a Facebook Live or a virtual open house through Zoom, whatever your preferred video communication method is. But we would absolutely encourage, and I think a lot of people would reiterate this, to advertise and promote ahead of time. So this is simply a graphic with some details on it um, for you to promote an upcoming virtual open house or just whatever service you're gonna offer via video. You know what, Katie, on this one, I would love, Alex, what do you think of this? Just have uh, this graphic, but maybe like slice it into three sideways and have like three different properties and be like, we're gonna do vir three virtual open houses, boom, 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 and we start at this time. There you go. Yeah. I'd also leave, okay. love to see it tested with a, uh, with a register for the upcoming open house with a registration button just to see oh. even if they miss. You know, I happen to host uh, for friends a Cards Against Humanity game uh, <laughs> last weekend. And, but I made it where people had to register. And uh, so I got to see who didn't show up but I've got all their information now. They're my friends, so it's not a big deal, but you know, you might have people that don't show up to the open house, but would register in advance. Very but true. Test it and yeah. run yeah. just the graphic and run registration. So that way it, the people that don't want to give up their information could just show up. Yeah. And Alex, that's, a, that's something that we're actually, we're working on as we speak. I think that's almost like the Holy grail to these virtual tours is, you know, here's a virtual tour, sign up. And if you miss it, we send out the link and you can promote it to them. So that exactly is um, in, in the queue. We hope to have it in the next uh, 30 days. I know our product team is probably going to kill me for that, but uh, I know it's being worked on as we speak. <laughs> well, we, we, want uh, be, we want to be one of the first. We want to be one of the first. We'll 30, um, 31 days. 31 days. We give them an extra day of leaving. 31 days. 31 days. Uh, Katie, and Katie or Michael, I have a question nope. from the audience for either of you. Uh, do either of you suggest to boost this? Post, the one that I'm seeing right here, virtual open house, or? Yes, I mean, so in theory, if this is an advertisement for a virtual open house that you would be hosting in the future, April 12th, for example, mm -hmm. then absolutely, especially if you do plan on conducting a Facebook Live because you cannot advertise a live in advance. So any means to generate some buzz about it ahead of time, um, show off either one or two really key features of that home, like the infinity pool or a beautiful kitchen backsplash, right? Mm -hmm. Just to generate some buzz, absolutely boost and advertise that ahead of time. 
um, since you cannot do so with Facebook Live, but of course it depends on how you pick your poison and conducting virtual open houses. All right, so, All right, so question. I know you guys run this uh, obviously on Back at You, right? So back at you uh, Guys, take a look at that if you haven't already. Uh, go to their page. They, they'll tell you the costs of everything there. But uh, for those that are not using your product or, and want to try it on, on their own, what happens when, when we make this ad? Should we be boosting it or should we be going to ads manager to run it on the back end? Which one do you prefer? Sure. So again, through, again and this isn't to, to sell anybody either way. It's whatever you're most comfortable doing. If you're familiar with you know, ads manager, and uh, you, you have the time to do it and you're an expert, go for it. I think it's, you know, I think the ad manager is great. I think it's tough to use. Um, we have a lot of clients that just aren't overly tech savvy and just prefer to someone else to do it. And, uh, and that's what we do. So yeah, we integrate with, with the Facebook ad manager, the Instagram uh, ad manager. So uh, whenever someone uh, um, creates one of these open, you know, open houses or listing ads, again, virtual properties coming very soon you'll have the same opportunity and functionality to schedule and, uh, and, uh, and boost it. All right. And then the other question, how do you register for the Facebook live virtual open house? And are you promoting it through zoom once we go live? How are, how are you seeing people run their virtual open houses? Sure. Okay. Do you want to grab that one? Yeah, for sure. So with Facebook Live, you cannot, there's no registration process. It's simply promoting ahead of the time. Uh, Facebook Live is great and I highly suggest it over platforms like, you know, I love Zoom. Zoom's great and you can integrate it with Facebook Live or Google Hangouts, you know. Uh, but the good thing about Facebook Live is the algorithm loves, 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 loves live videos. So they're viewed three times longer than recorded videos. They generate 10 times the rate of comments than recorded videos. So what you would have to do is just advertise your Facebook page, your business page ahead of time, since that's where the live video will be hosted. So even though there's no registration process, a little sneaky workaround to that would be providing a fake registration for it where you could capture email addresses, phone numbers through a landing page and then email maybe five minutes before or text them five minutes before with a link to your Facebook page prior to going live. So there are workarounds in that sense, but uh, as far as just registering for it, Facebook treats it as just a public video. So there's no technical but, registration process. I believe with a Facebook event, if you did the event, um, that would be kind of similar. It captures your registration information uh, right there at the event. Yes, and you can also notify your audience that you plan to go live. So if you already have the date and time scheduled, people can opt into getting those reminders just through Facebook, the platform itself. Yeah, exactly. Here, I'm going to run through what we do so that people can understand just the, the possible process to get the most people engaged quickly. And that's, uh, I put a link to the YouTube video that I created for this one. So let's say you have a virtual tour that you're going to run. Like you see this ad right here. Let's talk real estate. What questions, but let's pretend, can you go back to the previous screen? Sure. So we can go and take a look at that virtual. So virtual open house, April 12th at 10 AM. So let's say I'm running this as an event, right? I know Michael premier, right? You're talking about premier. I'm talking yeah. about an event here. Uh, and once it's 10 a.m., you're going to go live on that event page, right? Because if you go live somewhere else, nobody's going to know that register for the event. So make sure it's on the event page that you're doing it. <laughs> and if you're using Zoom, make sure that you go live through Zoom through the event page. And if you're wondering how to do that, click on the link that I have right there. You can, uh, you can watch that. So what we do is we go live through Zoom. And then let's say I'm doing a virtual tour. I show then my virtual tours through the Matterports that we created, through any videos that we have, and I'm talking through it and I'm showing people the homes. And then as I go live, I'm also doing a watch party at the same time. So what happens is I go live, it notifies everybody, it notifies my friend Alex and Michael, and then I do a watch party and then it might notify Katie, but if it doesn't, it's going to give me the option to invite a whole bunch of people. And I see Katie there, I'm going to go, Katie, inviting. And then I invite a whole bunch of people. Now I have two different sets of audiences. And instead of having just five people on, 
maybe you can have 15 or 20 because now you're running it as a live and as a watch party. And it gives you just more eyes to do that. That's what I wanted to add on that one, guys. That's great. Cool. So you can go on to the next screen. There we go, Siri. All right. So how does one generate leads in this current climate, Katie? <laughs> I'm going to pass that ball right back to you, Tristan. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, uh, I'll tell you the way we've been doing it uh, is it's all in the approach. We've been running ads. We've been running Facebook lead ads, Facebook ads, and Google PPC. Uh, we've been running those for years, and we haven't stopped because we know now, especially now, with Facebook telling us this morning that they're up 70% mm -hmm. in the amount of activity that's going on. That's telling me that more, there's more opportunities for us. Now, it's just going to depend on our approach, right? And our approach will matter a lot. Uh, and this is Alex. Alex, I'm going to play this with you, buddy, because I know you and I are of the same mindset here, okay? Sure. Uh, I know that, that you and I approach this with a lot more heart than selling, and we're, we're more socially aware. And so when you get a lead from Facebook, which we get a lot through Facebook lead ads and Facebook. Um, let's say it comes through and they're looking for a specific home. I'm going to be reaching out to them sounding like this, Alex, you're the lead. So I'm going to be like, hi, Alex. And then you're like, yeah, it's, this is Alex. And I'm like, Hey Alex, it's Tristan with Keller Williams Realty. You just visited our website through Facebook. And look, I, I know you're, you're not going to be making a move anytime soon, but I don't want to spam you either. Can you tell me what cities you're looking in so I can send you homes that you at least like to see? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, what you're doing this and you're doing two things with that. One, I'm telling Alex, hey, Alex, look, uh, I'm not, I'm not going to harass you here. I know you're not buying, right? So you can chill. You don't have to be uh, wondering if I'm going to try to sell you on anything. And number two is you're letting them respond in the sense of if they do have urgency and motivation right now, they're going to respond and say, wait, wait a second, Tristan. I am, I am serious. I need to buy right now. But you're, you're putting the ball in their court. Yeah, and that, Tristan's that tone. Your tone is just, is, is everything, right? I mean, you can really say anything to anybody. It's really how you say it. And I think when you, when your tone is the way it is, it's, you know, I think if you, it's, you're giving them control you're giving them the opportunity to say, no, I'm not ready. You're being respectful of their time, of the circumstance. It's, it's the tonality. It's everything. And I think, I don't know who would hang up with you on that. Uh, sure. it's, it's Alex great. just hung yeah. up on me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I would, say, I would say in a normal market to be overly assumptive and push people out going, oh, I know you're probably not looking to buy right away. You, know, you may be making an assumption and giving them an ability to get off the hook even though they are potentially serious. Yeah. Uh, but right now with what's going on, there really is no gray area. It's either people that are just bored and looking to look at houses to kill their time or they're serious. So in this case, I think Tristan's exactly spot on in that if they are serious and they need to make a move, they're gonna go, no, no, no. I was actually looking because I have to make a change. Something happened. Yeah. That's the key. Now, other ways that we're generating leads in, in this current climate is we're just reaching out to our database. Right? We're reaching out to our database. It's everything else you're hearing out there. Reaching out to your database, your sphere, and just coming from a point of caring. Mm -hmm. right? It's a lot more heart and a lot less selling. And when you shift this over to online, we're, we haven't taken away any of the money that we're putting in on Facebook. We've actually gone up because, like I showed you, 70% is a lot. <laughs> so we're, we put in a little bit more money on Facebook ads, so Facebook lead ads and regular ads, and a little bit more money on Google PPC. And we're noticing that we're getting a lot more people coming through. We just had to change our scripts. And so some of the ways that we're also getting more buyers and more sellers is running ads like the one you saw Katie post there, because those are ads. You're trying to get people engaged through virtual tours, through open houses. And like I was talking to Michael last night about, we're testing out online buyer seminars too. And 
that in its early stages online, but so far I'm blown away as to how well it's working. So um, those are the ways that we're doing it. Katie or Michael or Alex, are you guys seeing anything else right now? Well, one of the big things that I've noticed is just bringing that social element back to social media. Um, even though a lot of consumers and hopefully they're practicing social distancing, everyone is still very much longing and sensing that connection and they're trying to go after that perhaps even more now than ever. So socializing with online communities is only going to help further your strengthen with them and create new supporters for your business as well. Um, obviously, these are super unprecedented times for any industry, but especially real estate, which is one that thrives on community and thrives on collaboration and partnership. So bringing that social element back and having real conversations and coming from a place of service and not sales, exactly what you said, is what we've seen be the most beneficial while still keeping a real estate tone and umbrella just as the overarching theme. Yeah, sure. I yeah. think it, go ahead. Oh, when you add, you know, the social and you add that to the video and the sincerity, uh, the effectiveness just really is that much greater you know, today, uh, for sure. I and mean, when you see posts, you know, we can show you some examples of, you know, supporting your, your local um, restaurants, right? Your, you know, and, and your, your, your local stores. I mean, that's, that's genuine. It keeps you in front of people and it's, uh, and you're being very sensitive, you know, right? Like, I have a, um, you know, a restaurant down the street, you know, I've been there since day one, it opened and I went yesterday to pick up some food and the guy couldn't thank me enough for just my, my, you know, for my support and, uh, you know, I've been happy to do it. And, uh, you know, I love, I love them. And it's just, you know, I feel so bad what's going on to, for all of our businesses. Uh, but, but again, the restaurants are just getting crushed. <laughs> and so, um, you yeah, know, I'll do my little part. And I think people appreciate that. And when you can talk about it, um, I think it goes that much further today. So I have a question on this because I, I agree with what you're saying, Michael. It's mm -hmm. we've got to use a lot more heart. If, if we're going to get, if we are going to learn one thing out of this whole thing is, is that we're going to be using a lot more heart once we get out of this, which is a cool thing. Right. And then you, well, have the other well, you know, Tristan, you're going to know who your friends are uh, because uh, you're not only seeing their posts, right. And, and how they're, you know, expressing themselves, but you're also talking to your friends and neighbors. Uh, we're talking to our business associates, our vendors, right? And we're like, hey, you know, everybody needs help now. And what I really do find kind of just off topic a little bit about more admirable about this whole situation is that everybody seems to be helping everybody. I mean, everybody's going back and, and cutting deals to everybody and we're just giving that back to, to everybody else. So um, you're gonna know who your friends are. And, uh, and I think we're doing a great job on our side as far as the back at you side where you know, we have, you know, these you know, large brokerages coming back to us, asking for breaks, and hey, happy to do it. Let's do whatever we can. You know, it's you know, this is not a time to make money. This is a time just to tread, tread some water, uh, and uh, and come out of this hopefully a little stronger too. That's very true, man. Very true. Now with this screen, with what I'm seeing, this looks like an Instagram ad. Am I right, Katie, or no? That's right. Uh, a post specifically, not an not an ad. Post, perfect. Um, and I just wanted to to show an Instagram example here. Because one thing that we have been curating for our clients as well as just encouraging people to do on their own is share some DIY inspiration, some decor inspiration, because a lot of us, obviously maintaining a social distance means that you're spending a lot of time inside. And while movie marathons and board games and Netflix and Tiger King can only occupy so much of your time, <laughs> things might start to get a little old after a while. So give your audience something to do that's fun and that also is relevant to your space, right? It could be as simple as telling them to give that wall a fresh coat of paint that they've been staring at the last few weeks or wipe down your baseboards, rearrange furniture, give them a gallery wall as a picture of inspiration. You know, Instagram is a very visual platform. That's definitely a no brainer. Uh, it's where pretty pictures thrive. So this isn't a platform where you're gonna want to share the news or blogs or articles, right? Similar to Pinterest in a way, it's a, a good platform for inspiration that is visual. So this is a, a really key example and something that you can be sharing right now that's positive, lighthearted, uh, but also puts some people on their feet, gives them something to do, right? Yeah, it's true now. 
I, I don't know if you want me to touch on this right now, Michael, because I don't know what the next slide is, but one <laughs> thing that's always been frustrating for me, and Alex, if you use Instagram, let me know what you think, is when I go to Instagram and I want to find a solution to help me auto post directly to it, I can't find one. And I've tried Buffer, I've tried everybody, and all they do is just they notify me and say, oh, it's time to post, here's the post, now you go ahead and do it, right? And so that's been frustrating to me, but you guys have a solution, right? Um, <laughs> so the cat's kind of uh, out of the bag, uh, Tristan. So, um, um, so yes, it's been very frustrating for people to auto post on Instagram. Um, probably our number one feature request over the last – two years, uh, for sure. Um, and, um, you know, Instagram, as many of you know, you have to be, if you're required to physically approve it before it posts. So the automation is, uh, kind of falls short, uh, and no one in the real estate industry has, uh, has been able to auto post, uh, except for now. So what makes you uh, guys different than everybody else? Because <clears throat> that's sure. a pretty so, amazing thing. Yeah. You know, we're, I mean, it was, we're super excited on, on our side. We've been working uh, at this for a good probably year, year and a half. Um, want to get a, an official Facebook marketing partner badge. We call it it's an FMP. So we had to go through a Facebook um, vetting process that took a long, long time. And then once you get that FMP, you get access to um, the Instagram API. And it's only at that time that you can start working with it. So uh, again, it took a long time for us to get there. And, uh, and as of, I think, this week, we officially launched it, a soft launch. Uh, so all of our content, and we had to curate some content, we had to change some of our content, how it posts, uh, but is now being posted to Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and now Instagram. So you actually are now the first ones to know. <laughs> um, we're going to do a press release, I think, next week. Uh, let's make sure the whole system doesn't go down and it works smoothly, but so far, so great. Uh, with great product team, great uh, development and design team. A lot of initiatives went into to make this happen, and uh, let's do a whole excited, so. let's do a whole webinar just on Instagram for lab. Love people. that, <laughs> love it. That'd be, be huge, fun, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's super important, right? Because Instagram is uh, is one of the fastest growing networks today. So Instagram is where you need to be uh, for the future. So no, next next that. webinar, we don't want to give too much away on the Instagram right now. Steal all the thunder. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but look, the posts that I'm seeing right here, the do it yourself projects, mm -hmm. and an inspiration. Uh, I want to just slow down right here only because everyone's at home right now and they're realizing how much of a hoarder they are. And they're realizing, oh my gosh, uh, I know Alex and I are. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, oh crap, yourself, damn it. Kristen. No I'm more gonna... here, huh? <laughs> uh, uh, we have to just throw everything away. So, I mean, I ordered a dumpster, uh, like a <laughs> massive dumpster in the front of my house. And we literally, we started with like a small section and we're like, oh, you know what? Maybe we should do the whole garage, right? And so now that we're done through the whole garage, right? Now we're like in the kitchen. Now we're going into the closets. We're not stopping. And now we've like emptied out four trash, massive trash cans. And we're like, were we hoarders? Wow. And so I probably, look at these. Probably were. I know. You know what? Shut up. <laughs> uh, but I look at this cool stuff, Katie, that you're showing me here. And I'm looking for inspirations because now I have an empty room. We're like, uh, wow, what do we do with this? Or what do I do with the garage? And you want to attract more people to, to what's really happening right now. And that's what's really happening. Yeah, really for sure. Thing. I mean, Instagram too is a great platform, especially right now to create challenges. If you've noticed, a lot of people are tagging others in challenges. So you could make a spring cleaning quote, quote challenge where every day you add a new Instagram post with a cleaning prompt in the caption, you can get creative, right? It's also a really good platform to show smaller bite-sized pieces of your active listings that you may be sitting on. Um, to entice viewers to attend those virtual open houses we were talking about. So Instagram is a really flexible platform that you can be very creative with. Yeah, I love that. And then some people are saying, look, just get permission for pictures. Yeah, and ask your broker. Your broker at one time usually has a lot of listings, right? But look, my, my brokerage here has 340 agents and we have permission from all of them 
to use their pictures. So we just find the most beautiful pictures of kitchens or backyards or beaches or whatever and use those because now you're being really local and you're also advertising homes that are on the market. Uh, that's, how, that's how we do it. But I mean, Michael, Katie, back at you does this automatically too, right? So it just grabs our listings and posts them out for us. Yeah, it's all automated, right? And, uh, and again, what some of our clients are doing, they're maybe changing some of the, the headers and making it maybe appropriate for their market or, or, for the, or for the virtual tour or for the virtual conference call, the virtual contact me. It's, it's uh, yeah, it's very unique. Um, so, uh, yeah. Katie, I guess there's some more examples too of, of, of do-it-yourselves or how-tos uh, to sail through that so people can get an idea of, you know, some inspiration here. Yeah, of course. So this is more along the veins of any social media platform. Uh, this is a Facebook example, but something that you should be sharing right now are just different local response and recovery funds. There are tons of affected communities out there. So if you have or know of resources, just to help those most vulnerable populations receive support, it's all about positioning yourself to be a great neighbor, to be that community expert. Um, and this is going to go a long way too. Do you guys find the information for, for our accounts and just auto post based on area or how does it work? So this would be a user generated piece of content. If you had a specific charity or nonprofit you would want to promote, but for local content based on your area and what you would select within our content categories, we do pull local housing data um, as well as restaurant recommendations, which we're not posting right now for obvious reasons, um, but it's all based on location. And then the categories you select after the fact. So something okay. like this is generic, right? Please, please consider donating to our local food bank. So as long as we've seen it, um, when it's posted, we're paying attention. We can go and throw a comment in there for us here locally in Vegas, for instance, uh, and put a link into Three Square and their donation link. Precisely. So we could use Absolutely. something kind of generic like this without it having to be uh, area specific. Exactly. 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 Right. So some of our content is a little bit more generic uh, and that you can customize and some of it is a little bit more localized. So it's a mix. Plus we offer a lot of video content and that's really what we're trying to get to, right? Just posting links and images is very, you know, three years ago. Uh, so if that's kind of the content you're posting, kind of you got to up, up, your, up your game a little bit. Um, it's, a lot of it's about the videos uh, and, um, and we're, we're really good at that. Mm -hmm. uh, here's another example, I think as Katie's pointing out, just a kind of local restaurant, how to support them. Again, just different kind of ideas of, of inspiration. Uh, we are throwing in content uh, uh, currently that is a little bit more um, the COVID-19 type of content. Uh, so we're getting that in there on a real-time basis. Uh, so we're very aware of the situation and um, you know, we're, we're a content provider. So we want to make sure you're, you're posting some of the best content out there. Hey guys, I, I know that we didn't want to kind of share too much of what you guys do but you what you guys do is so amazing that I want to share I want to share the back end really good. I'm just going to take over on the screen okay <laughs> drive away um, yeah I'm going to show everybody what you do because I think it's a it's magic uh, one of my friends says look it happens auto magically I'm like yeah that's right auto magically auto magic so yeah, like you see here on the back end <laughs> my upcoming content here, I can take a look at, at what's coming out, right? And I can even edit it. And more importantly, because this I think is the most powerful part of it, if I click on see all, I can look at what's gonna be posted on my calendar. And to me, that's everything. Because now I say, okay, well, I don't have to take care of this, but let's say I do wanna post every day. Maybe I can post myself too, to kind of give it a little bit of a mix and more uh, authenticity, genuineness, right? On the days that I know I'm not going to be doing this, look, it's already the biggest challenge for agents. I'm going to stop sharing. The biggest you challenge. You guys set up your Instagram. You guys set up your Instagram. You didn't set up your Instagram yet, Justin. Oh, dude, thanks for calling me out, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Uh, no, um, the biggest challenge for agents. And Alex, what do you think, man? Is the biggest challenge actually figuring out what to post? Yeah, uh, you know, I'm going to say that that's uh, for for me and my second? team 50 50. Ooh, what's the other? What's the other part? The content calendar and consistency. When to pose? Did I post yesterday? Oh, things are getting in the way. If you don't have a calendar blocked, 
it's like anything else. You put it off, right? If you don't know what days you're going to the gym and you know, ah, oh, you know what? I didn't really schedule if I was going to do four days this week or five days this week. So you don't go. Dude, that is such a great analogy, man. That's really, good. I look, and I know you work out, Alex. So I know <laughs> that, that makes a lot of sense because it hey guys, I'm going to repeat what Alex said, because I think it's a beautiful thing. When, when you're working out, the more success you're going to have when you're working out is if you outlined exactly what you're going to do that day and what day and time you're going to work out. And if you apply that to social media and say, look, this is the day and time I'm going to post, and this is what I'm going to post, and this is where I'm going to post it to, all of a sudden it becomes part of your routine. And I think that's where you start succeeding because that's where, that's where Alex and I have started... Alex, you got me beat. I think you have a six pack and, and I have a one pack, but I'm going to catch up to you, buddy. Five away. <laughs> five away. That's right. I, I'm going to make a shirt that says five away. That's a beautiful, that's a great, thank you, Katie. I You're welcome. That. that is awesome. Five away. <laughs> and right, I just want to respond to a, to a comment that actually Gary um, is, is asking about, is about, um, you, know, you know, people are asking, you know, just like probably you, Tristan and, um, and Alex, like less about maybe a house, but what's up with my mortgage payments? You know, am I going to kick, am I going to get, you know, um, you know, evicted, right? So that type of content you can post and share, right? I think that's very relevant community oriented content that, um, that you want to share. It's not just supporting your local restaurant uh, right, or local food bank, but you know, when some of the questions I'm sure you're asked are insane, <laughs> but they're very community oriented. So Post, you know, about the evictions, post about, you know, deferring your mortgage payments. That's, that's, you're the knowledge center. So. Yeah. I mean, remember that 55% of Americans get their news from social media. Uh, so you can be the voice of the real estate industry within your community and put those fears at ease or provide those resources. What was that uh, percentage again? 55% of Americans get their news from social media outlets. Wow, no wonder the Russians hacked us. I didn't even know that. That makes a lot of sense now. With that said, though, you don't want to regurgitate the news cycle. You want to make sure that everything that you're sharing is has some vein of positivity. Uh, a lot of people are just being slammed with COVID-19 news. And at yeah. the end of the day, that's that's not the business that you're in, but it is still appropriate to share a little bit because the last thing you want to do is be the agent with your head in the sand and just acting as if it's business as usual when clearly that's that's not the case. There is a way to be mindful about everything and still sensitive, right? Yeah, that's the key. And, and yeah. Katie, I'm, I'm sorry that I took your screen away. You can go back. I just wanted <laughs> okay. to the back end. I, for, I didn't even remember that I wasn't sharing here. I'll Alex, on um, you, you wanted to point out something or you wanted yeah, to say- Yeah, the big thing that I would add when it comes to things like uh, paying rent and mortgages, you know, you've got federal laws, you've got local laws. Just don't BS them and pretend like you want to be the all-knowing. If you don't know, tell them you, you're not sure and you'll have to research their particular situation or give them a resource to go to. But don't try to tell them something that ends up not being the right information and comes back to, to you know, backfire. I, I agree. Good point. Yeah, makes good sense. Uh, making stuff up never, never works. Yeah. <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what I was going to say. Go ahead. Next. <laughs> so this is a, an example of, it's actually a literal example of the content that we're providing to all of you guys in this Dropbox link that, uh, that we'll post here in a second. Just some positive content regarding the pandemic that's non-real estate related is totally appropriate. A lot of people, again, are stuck in their homes and it makes sense that a lot of the conversation happening about the pandemic is taking place online. Of course, everyone's using social media to air their anxieties, again, share information like we were talking about, and even just bide time while they're stuck in their self-isolation. So sharing a tiny bit of content regarding the pandemic is super appropriate and even encouraged as long as it does not suffocate your newsfeed. Uh, again, just showing your audience that your head isn't in the sand and that you can still be of use and of help to them right now. I love that. That's very true. I also like what song do you sing when washing your hands? That's cute. 
Yeah, just ways to prompt some engagement. Uh, again, bringing that social element back to social media. Engaging questions is a huge part of that. People, shocker, love to voice their opinions online. <laughs> so encouraging them to do so in a lighthearted way that's still appropriate is going to go a long way. I love it. I love it. Thanks. Okay, I think that's uh, close to the end of that. Kate, if you don't mind posting that, um, that uh, the link, that'd be great so people can uh, uh, grab some of the resources that we want to give to everybody. Sure, you Kate, got it. Let me... Let me pull it up. So All right, while you pull it up, you could see here with backatumedia.com forward slash conference, you can sign up and you save $149 today. Michael, what does that mean with the save $149? Uh, yeah, no, well, listen, we didn't, we didn't, you know, um, this wasn't supposed to be that promotional. I know it got a little bit and I do apologize, but again, a lot of things that we do are, um, were examples of what our clients are doing and what's working today. So we just use our conference page because that's all we got. Uh, and um, we waive all the setup fees, uh, which is about 149 bucks uh, to get going. So just, you know, it's, it's a time to not spend extra money unless you really need to. So let's waive all the setups and, uh, and just get everybody on our kind of conference specials, which we don't offer very often. But again, it's the only page we've got. So uh, that's what we're going to use. Um, I love and, it. And, and, and so uh, Katie just posted a Dropbox uh, a link to everybody. In that link, there's a, some content that you guys can all use. I think there's like eight pieces of content. Um, you view it however you want. It's yours. Uh, put it in your newsletters. Uh, post it. Uh, again, just kind of really just helps out. Uh, and there's also um, a link um, to uh, to Kate. What am I missing here? Um, the, I oh, do you want to put the? I can put the conference link in there. Yeah, yeah. Put it on there. I put the link. Uh, let me share it right now. I put the link for Facebook. Uh, I'll put the link on Facebook and what I'm going to do also is I'm going to use this link and for those that missed it to our database for lab coats, once we finish editing this, we'll send this out and we'll have the YouTube video along with the link so that people can download it as well. So cool. guys, if you guys missed this, don't worry, we'll send it out. Just give us two days to fully edit. But oh. anything else that you guys wanted to add, Alex, Katie, Michael? If anyone has any additional questions or comments, concerns, or you just want to chat since we're all stuck in our homes, you can email hey, just H-E-Y, at backatyou.com. Uh, and of course, if you just want to learn more about what we do as well, you can email us there. Um, but yeah, no, thank you so much for having us. This was really lovely. Yeah, we're going to set up a, a second one to this for Instagram. Yay. And that'll be that'll be really fun. We'll also bring in... A friend of Alex and mine's, his name is Dean Aguilar. He has about 300,000 followers on Instagram. So he'd be somebody good to bring on as well as we talk about Instagram, right? Absolutely. I love that. I love that. I love that. It's all about being social. It's all about connecting uh, with, your, with your community uh, and being sincere, right? Use video. You know, video is the key right now. Schedule meetings, schedule, you know, listings, open houses, all virtually. Um, and you know, show that you again, you, you care about kind of your neighborhood, your stores, the food banks, um, you know, and everything that's going around you. So that's this, the key. this is the sincerity, it's the tonality. Again, that's that's the key. Michael, what's the price on this? I have a few questions on pricing for back at umedia.com. Oh, it ranges from seventy-five bucks a month uh, and up. So it's you know everything that we showed you is at seventy-five dollars a month, uh, Tristan. So. That's great. Uh, all the content, all the access to Instagram, um, our virtual open houses when they're out in, you know, in the next uh, month all, will all be included. So and what's the website to go to? Backatyou.com or is it? Okay, back at you. Yeah, backatyou.com. Uh, if you just want to sign up back with that special, backatyou.com forward slash conference. Okay. Um, and if you have some questions or you want uh, maybe to see a demo, just go to hey, H-E-Y, and email hey at backatyou. Dot com. Awesome. Hey, at com for maybe scheduling a demo. I love so, that. So we need two shirts, Alex. We need one that says, hey, and then one that says, I'm five away. Five away, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, the only thing I'd, I'd say to add at the end of this, and I know uh, Tristan, you know, at, at some of the LCA live events and things, this is, this is a common thread through almost everybody's talking is that this business has never been an instant gratification business. If you happen to get that low hanging fruit in, in a lead, whether it's an RDC or a Zillow or, or online lead, then you, know, you should be celebrating that. But just remember everything that you're doing right now 
especially if you're doing it in true care and sincerity. Everything you're doing right now is gonna be what pays off in two months, six months, so don't bury your hand, head in the sand. Make sure you're there, make sure you're aware, make sure you know that your constituency is aware, and that's gonna reap its, its benefits uh, here to come. So just keep that in mind as you're doing these things. Don't, don't get scared up and go, uh, go curl up in the fetal position in the corner, it's not gonna do you any good. Good point, man. We also hope that everyone watching this is staying safe and healthy and our hearts absolutely go out to everyone who's being affected by what's happening. Uh, we're all in this together and, you know, sending our love to everyone's way. I love it. Guys, don't remember also, this is being recorded. We're going to upload this into YouTube. We'll email it out to everybody. And if you can't wait to watch the recording, it's, it's going to live on our business page on Lab Code Agents. It's there right now. It's playing. You get to rewind it and watch it there anytime. So thank you all for being on. I appreciate it. Can't wait for the Instagram one. Thank, thank you so much, much for having us. Be safe. Thank you. Bye. Bye.